Hey guys, welcome to another vlog. I am currently rushing around trying to get ready to go out to dinner. So I am meeting up with Samantha, Samantha March and Risa, and we're all getting together. Well, we like to get together, but we're all getting together tonight because Angelica Nyquist is in town. So the four of us are going out. We're meeting up at Vanderpump at the Paris Hotel. So I am, <laughs> I'm like, Try, I was like catching up with things all day today. As you guys know, I was just uh, out of town and I, I just have so many like really random things to catch up with. Anyway, I've been running around all day today. You can probably tell by my hair. So I, yeah, I was like, oh my God, I have to get ready for dinner. So I am currently getting dressed. I'm throwing on my Simone Rocha blouse and I'm just gonna put on like a pair of black trousers and have to throw some makeup on. So let me go ahead and <laughs> finish getting dressed and show you my outfit. So here's my outfit. Here's that Simone Rocha embroidered blouse that I got while I was in New York this last time. And then these are some cotton, like wide leg trousers from Everlane. And I've got my Prada puffy mules, which made an appearance in my um, best of luxury purchases of 2023 so far. I love these mules. They just, yeah, they go with so many outfits and they're super comfortable. So I'm gonna do the fastest makeup look right now and I'm just gonna list everything down below in my description box. I'm not gonna talk through it. It's also stuff that you've seen me use for like months now. Um, but I wanna sit down and talk to you guys about like my trip, like a little bit more about it. So I think I'll do that when I'm <laughs> feeling a little bit less rushed. Maybe tomorrow morning or something, we can do like a morning rambles. Yeah, right now I just need to get ready, make myself look a lot more presentable than I look right now. Oh my God, that Dr. Jart is amazing. I just immediately look refreshed <laughs> and well rested and yeah, all the things that I'm not. Wow. All right, definitely some eyebrow gel. I'm basically using the makeup bag that I took <laughs> on my trip, which as you guys know, I did not pack a lot of stuff. Voila, I am all done. Let's head on out to the strip. Taking you in this moment Come get close like you all night Read your aura, you want more of all this love You'll be your name Release all of your burdens It's been me, you'll be searching Take a load off and your clothes off Just relax, you deserve it from dinner that was so lovely the Vanderpump at Paris is really really nice I love the decor it was really like very true to at least the other Vanderpump restaurants that I've seen like the one at Caesars it has this kind of like olden kind of overgrown backyard look to it seems like they kind of stayed true to their aesthetic but then they added some like Parisian elements like there were um, parasols like over the bar it was really really cool the food was really decent our waiter was excellent. I think that was the best part of the whole experience. He was like super, super friendly, very knowledgeable, always had like a recommendation if we asked. He was attentive, but not overly so. 
So it was great. It was really, really great. So I am getting ready for bed and I wanted to wash my face. So I'm working with fluorosis on this portion of the video. Um, I've worked with fluorosis before. I've talked about their makeup, but I've never really talked about their skincare, maybe like their lip mask. So they have a whole line of cleansers. They have a cleansing balm, which is really, really nice. I've used this several times. It's really nice and creamy. It really removes makeup very quickly. They also have makeup remover wipes, which I also really like to use as like a first step to cleanse, but they have a cleansing oil, which is what I want to use tonight because I have waterproof um, mascara on. I have um, the Sisley Shadow Stick, which is long wearing, and those long wear shadow sticks can sometimes be tough to remove. This is their Botanical Hydra Soothe Balancing Cleansing Oil. So before I left for my trip, I was testing out this product and it is really, really lovely. And they just launched, hold on, actually, let me hold up both. They just launched a larger size. So this is the 210 mil, which is only going to be available in the US, but they do have this 140 mil uh, bottle. So it does come in this pump. And look at this gorgeous design that they have inside. Fluorosis really thinks of absolutely everything when it comes to design. So this looks like a flower stem, like the little plastic straw on the inside. It has this like flower stem detail in there. It's so pretty. Isn't that cool? just adds that little touch. And when you have your cleansing products out on the vanity, I just feel like it's a really nice attention to detail that just, you know, makes everything aesthetically pleasing. So there's 11 types of floral essential oils and seven flower extracts in this cleansing oil. And this cleansing oil, it's not heavy. It doesn't leave a film behind, but it leaves my skin really moisturized, but it does a great job cleansing. It's really wonderful. But one of my favorite, favorite aspects of this cleansing oil is that it's fragrance free. And when I got home, Fluorosis had sent me this also. So they have the oil in this travel kit. So there's 14 of these little capsules. And I thought, oh my God, this would have been perfect for my trip. But I came home to them and I am definitely saving these for my next trip. So anyway, let's go ahead and remove my makeup. So what I like to do is pump three to four pumps into my hand. You could probably use less if you don't have like a lot of makeup on, if you're just washing your skin at the end of the night. And then I just like to massage it in. So hopefully you can get a sense of the texture of the oil. And so I'm gonna massage it in, massage it on my lips. Again, I'm just so, so happy it's fragrance free. And then I'm just gonna work it over my eye makeup, which is slightly stubborn to remove. And I like massaging this in for about, I don't know, 30 seconds. And at that point, I just wet my hands just so I have a little bit of water on my hands. And then I continue massaging. You can see it like emulsifies. And I probably just massage for like another 15 seconds. And then I take a cloth, I dampen that, I wring it out so it's not, you know, dripping wet. And then I just swipe everything off. So everything comes right off. I don't have any waterproof mascara left. I don't have any of that long wear eyeshadow stick left and my skin feels so soft, but without any film. And that's generally my issue with like balms or oils, like their balm doesn't leave behind a film either. And it just wipes away so cleanly, but my skin feels so soft and moisturized. I love it. I love this cleansing oil. And it's also especially good if you have a lot of SPF on. So I've also tested this out um, after I've like hung out by the pool and I've put a ton of SPF all over my face and my neck and everything. This takes it right off. It has been a lifesaver. Okay, and like I mentioned before, Fluorosis never misses a beat when it comes to design. So you know these pump bottles, they usually come with like a clip here to keep the pump from going down so you don't spill anything. So I always toss those away. You know, once I get it, I open it up, I toss that away. So what will come with your oil is this peony flower which is a clip. So if you want to close up, basically block your pump, you just go ahead and click that right back on. And now you can't like accidentally press that down. So it's great for travel. This is very, very secure. If you want to remove it, it has this little right here. It has this little handle. You could just grab that and unsnap it. 
but it's on there very, very snugly and it prevents any sort of mishaps from the pump. And look at how beautiful that is. <laughs> I can't stand it. When they sent this to me and there was, you know, this comes in a different box. I opened up the box and I was like, what is, they just sent me a flower? And then I saw the clip. I was like, oh my God, stop it, <laughs> stop it. They just think of everything. So anyway, on top of it being an incredible product, it is so beautiful to look at. I love leaving this out on my vanity. Look at how radiant my skin looks. I haven't done anything to it other than cleanse it with that cleansing oil. It is phenomenal. So anyway, I will leave a link to the products down below in my description box as always. And a big, big thank you to Florasis for sponsoring this portion of the video. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and continue getting ready for bed and pass out because it's been a very, very long day and I'll see you guys in the morning. How's everyone doing? I am sitting here, as you can see outside, it's like pitch black because it's really early. Again, just a little bit of jet lag. I was really hoping to sleep through the night. So I just woke up, it's about three in the morning. Um, yeah, and I figured, well, why don't I, just, why don't I just get up and start vlogging? Why not? So what can I update you guys on? Oh, so this beautiful floral bouquet showed up yesterday and you guys know how much I love my fresh flowers and uh, they're from this uh, beautiful florist here in Vegas. And I uh, had no idea, you know, who it was from or why or whatever. And it just said, happy anniversary. And my husband and I celebrated our like dating anniversary while I was actually in Milan. So we weren't actually together for our anniversary, which was sad. I think that was the first time uh, we haven't been together, but anyway. That's just how the dates fell. And uh, we celebrated 27 years of being together. Wow, it's such a trip saying that out loud. 27, holy moly. God, there's some YouTubers I watch that are like in their late 20s. So they were born when I started dating my husband. Oh, that's creepy. So our dating anniversary and our wedding anniversary is about a month apart, but we tend to celebrate our dating anniversary more because, well, <laughs> it signifies that we've been together longer. Yeah, I just think it's, I don't know. It's a more fun date, I think, to celebrate, whatever. Um, so those flowers came yesterday. I'm so happy. I'm just staring at them. They make me so happy. Did I just drool? I just drooled all over myself. Can I tell you, I've been doing that more and more. <laughs> when I drink, I tilt the cup so far that it's just like I'm pouring it down my face. I don't know what I'm doing. Do I have coffee all over my face now? So I was away in Europe for two weeks and um, that's a long time. <laughs> it's a long time. And I know people go away for much longer. I. I don't know how people do it because it's, it really is, it's like right around the 10 day, 12 day mark. I always feel like, okay, now I could go home now. Like now is the time. And I've gone away for two weeks, like going back to New York where I feel very comfortable. You know, it's, it's essentially my home, but yeah, it's just like, I need, I need to be near like my stuff and like be in my space or whatever after a while and, and two weeks is too long. So anyway, I've just, I feel like I've been reacclimating for a really long time. I, at this point I came home like three days ago. I mean, that's not that long, but yeah, I feel like, you know, once you unpack and like you kind of get back into the swing of things or whatever, it's almost like, oh, it doesn't even feel like I went away, but it's taking me much longer, much, much longer this time. Maybe it's the jet lag, but yeah, I'm just like kind of catching up with stuff. I have um, some PR. We can do some PR unboxing. We could do that later. What else? I have like grocery shopping to do. <laughs> I opened up the refrigerator when I came home and it was like empty. The freezer was empty. And I looked at my husband, I was like, what, <laughs> what happened? He's like, I just ate whatever was in there. He's like, I just wanted to clean it out basically and not buy more food until you got home. <laughs> like, why? Why did you buy yourself some food? So anyway, I've got to do some grocery shopping. I think we're running low on toilet paper, like all that stuff. I feel like, 
even though I was the only one away, I feel like my husband just kind of put everything on pause <laughs> while I was away. Um, so it kind of feels like we both were away. So I have lots of random chores to do. Oh my God, I also need to do laundry. <laughs> you guys, that's the worst part about traveling. I don't like packing. I don't like unpacking. But the prepping and the like unraveling of all the travel is such a pain. <laughs> such a pain. My closet upstairs is still such a mess. I've also decided, sorry, I'm jumping topics probably because I'm tired and delirious. So if you guys watch my packing uh, for Italy vlog, I got the, they're basically like giant Ziploc bags, but you know, they're of a thick quality and there's two like zipper closures to really keep the air in. And you can really pack a lot of stuff in there. You just kind of like roll up whatever's in the bag and you kind of squeeze all the air out and then you close it, whatever. And it, you know, saves a lot of space in the luggage. Well, my friend Sarah that I was traveling with, she actually had like a space saver bag and it comes with like a little hand pump. And I know they have ones with like an electric pump or whatever. I think a hand pump is fine because the bag is so small. It's not like, you know, you're packing up your couch or anything. Anyway, uh, so she had a bunch of those and I heard her like pumping in her room one night and I was like, what is that? <laughs> I poked my head in and I started pumping away and I was like, oh my God. I'm like, how are those working out? She's like, they're amazing. She had all this clothing and she like picked it up. It was like a brick and it was super flat. And I was like, I have to get that next time. That is so much better than just the rolling up and squeezing the air out. I need to get some of those because that is like, I mean, especially if you're going to be traveling in the winter, like if you have sweaters and like puffy coats, that would save you so much space. So anyway, I have to get those. I'm like, I need, I need to step up my packing game. So yeah, anyway, I wanted to pass that along to you because uh, the Ziploc bags that I used, the travel bags that I used, that was the first time I used them. I think I mentioned them in my, um, in my vlog, my packing vlog. Um, so I wanted to give you guys like a follow up on that. And they were fine. They worked great. But the actual sucking the air out is, is like much better, much, much better. And can you believe I successfully, successfully brought two carry-ons with me on the way there? Now, on the way back, which I think I mentioned in my haul video, on the way back, I did have to mail, um, ship a box back. And my original plan when I was just packing carry-on was like, okay, eventually I'll just have to get like a big duffel or another suitcase or something, and I'll just check something in on my way home. But our flight from Milan to London was on EasyJet, which is like a European version of like Spirit and Frontier. It's, you know, it's inexpensive. It's like for quick short trips or whatever. Um, well, our flight actually didn't turn out to be very inexpensive because we had to, you just, you know, like Frontier and Spirit, you have to pay for every single thing. So we had to pay for one carry-on. We had to pay for two carry-ons. And then we were like, oh, we don't want to, I forget what the deal was, but it was like we had to pay for a check-in. So we didn't realize that we had to pay for our carry-ons. And we were like, okay, well now this ticket's like ridiculous. And we were kind of calculating, well, if we just ship stuff back and not have to worry about it, it was like a little bit more expensive than like having to pay for um, a check-in bag and like, you know, buying another bag and all that. And I was like, well, let's just ship our stuff back. So. Um, I shipped a big box back. We all shipped a big box back. And as you guys saw, that actually arrived. So by the time we got to London, I thought, okay, well, there's still the chance <laughs> that I'm going to have to buy a bag and, um, you know, check it in when I fly back to Vegas. But I didn't. I was pretty good in London. I didn't do that much. And I also, and I shipped back a lot. I was like, let me just take advantage of this <laughs> shipping back situation um, from Milan. So anyway, when I got to London, I had some extra space in my luggage and, yeah, I only had check-in on the way back too. So it was um, pretty awesome, pretty awesome. I mean, when I go to New York, oftentimes I'll just have like check-in bags, but I've never traveled for that long and such long distance and only have check-in luggage. I was <laughs> very excited, very, very excited. So that worked out really well. Oh wow, we're doing like another morning rambles here. This is turning into <laughs> quite the tradition. I now have a morning rambles segment in my vlogs now. But anyway, what else can I tell you about the trip? I think I pretty much said everything while I was vlogging. Um, but, you know, Sarah and Caitlin, the two women I was traveling with, we, 
we kept asking ourselves like questions like, okay, any regrets or like, what's your favorite purchase that you've made or whatever. So one of the questions um, that Caitlin posed was, um, okay, rank the cities, you know, Florence, Milan and London. And I was like, oh my God, that's so, so hard. But I think Florence is definitely number one because it was the most different. It was, you know, charming and it's very, um, you know, it's on the smaller side in terms of a city. So it's very manageable. We uh, didn't get everywhere, obviously, but it felt like we walked most of the city and it's very, very walkable. Um, our Airbnb was in a great location. It was right near the Duomo. And someone asked me for information on it, on the actual um, Airbnb, because they were going to, someone being you, someone being uh, one of the viewers here. And I didn't make the reservations, Sarah did. So I'm gonna reach out to her and ask her the information for it and see if I can get a link off of either Airbnb or VRBO. So yeah, so I'll try and get that for you guys and maybe I'll post that in my community tab or something. Anyway, so I think we all agreed that Florence was number one just because it's so, you know, magical. You know, it's just so, it's very, very historic looking. It's very, very old feeling. And so you really feel like you time traveled, essentially. And um, it's like an oil painting come to life. So I do think Florence was number one on all of our lists. It's just a really unique, unique place. And we spent the most time there too, right? Yeah, we spent close to a week there. So I think we got to know the city really well, better than the other two. And it was a really nice mixture between like work and play because we were there for, um, you know, Pity Filati, the knitwear trade show. And so that's, that was super exciting. I mean, that was really, really um, informative. And I can get into that in another vlog. That's a whole different topic. So, you know, we started out there and then we just had fun. So it was a really nice kind of mix too. So I think not only did we love Florence, but like our time in Florence was really great. So Florence was like number one on all of our lists. And then I picked Milan to be number two, just because, you know, it's different. It's an Italian city. It had that, like I mentioned in the vlog, it had that really nice mixture between very modern architecture um, because Milan is a bigger city. It's more bustling than Florence, not as big as Rome. And it had more of like a New York feel and the street watching like fashion was incredible. There was so much good fashion there. People really, really know how to dress and dress really, really well, like super sharp. Um, so it was really um, interesting city. It kind of, I had no expectations for Milan basically. So it just really surprised me and charmed me in every way. So for me, Milan was number two and I love London, but I've been to London a couple of times, um, before and you know, London is, it's different. <laughs> it's definitely different from Vegas. Um, but it's, you know, there's similarities to New York, which is what I'm used to. And not quite, it's a lot cleaner than New York. It's um, not quite as hectic as New York, but it's a big city and everyone speaks English. So it just felt a little bit more familiar right off the bat. But the time that I had in London was so incredible. And I mentioned this in the London vlog, I just kept running into people um, that watch this channel. So it, it was just really amazing. And Caitlin and Sarah were like, you have a huge following in London. And I'm like, who knew? <laughs> Who knew? So that was just really, really great. I felt very connected um, to London, but it was more about like, I think the people than the actual city. So I don't know, I guess Milan and London are kind of tied for very different reasons. So yeah, so we were like just <laughs> throwing questions like that out to each other the whole time. And Caitlin was like, what was your favorite purchase? And it's gotta be my uh, Lucifer rings, uh, the two diamond bands. And don't forget, those 10% off with code Michelle10, if you're interested in getting those uh, diamond bands, um, good until July 23rd. So my, my Luna diamond bands are definitely my, um, my favorite purchase. And then we were talking about regrets. Like, was there anything that you saw that you wanted to get that you didn't get? And I, I don't know if I have any like regrets, like I'm going to run out and try and find it here in the U S and get it. But there was the little Gucci bamboo handle with the bamboo closure. It looks like a little, looks like a little stick that you turn. Anyway, it's the little size. And in Florence, they had it in this really light minty pistachio green color. And of course I just fell in love with the color. And I thought, I don't know if that 
bamboo look is really me. I don't know if I would carry that around. Um, but I kept thinking about it. I kept thinking about it. And then when we got to Milan, um, I don't even think we stopped by a Gucci store. We were very, I was very focused on Prada since that's where Prada's from, uh, Milan. And so I had to get something from Prada there. And then when we went to London, I saw like at Harrods, I saw a lot of the smaller size bamboo bag and they didn't have it in the pistachio green. They had it in the bright like Kelly green, which I was tempted by also. But anyway, I was thinking maybe that is kind of a regret that I didn't get that. But again, no, I'm not gonna like run out and search for it here. It's like a small regret, but I think that's it. I think everything else, I just was so taken with um, the people and the cities that you know, shopping is always a lot of fun. You guys know I love shopping, but yeah, it was just fun just to like experience the cities. And let me tell you, who you travel with is so important. I mean, I'm not saying anything you don't know, obviously, but I just have to say, so I went with Sarah and Caitlin and I know Sarah very, very well. We worked together. I've known her now for years. Um, and she was actually reminding me that we hadn't seen each other in four years. So it's like, anyway, we go way back. Caitlin, I don't actually know very well. I know her from those days. So I haven't seen her in like four years also. And we never worked together or anything. But Sarah was like, I know you guys are gonna get along famously. And I knew her enough to know that like, I liked her very much. Anyway, not that I was nervous cause I'm pretty easy going, but you know, it's always like, well, I wonder how we're gonna travel together. It was fantastic. <laughs> It was absolutely fantastic. Like we all were laid back enough about what we wanted to do, but we weren't all just sort of like staring at each other. Like, what should we do? What should we do? Like there was always someone kind of driving the process and we were all on the same page. Like there are some trips like in Paris where I really wanted to go to some museums. There were certain things that I really wanted to see, but I think because in my mind, Florence and Milan were kind of like work situations like the trade show and then vlogging with Luna in Milan like I had uh, like a focus on those things I really didn't have um, I didn't really like plot out any sort of like touristy things to do I just thought well we'll see where the day takes us and because Florence was like literally overrun with Americans there were so many Americans there in fact I think I heard more American English than Italian when I was in Florence, that the lines for everything were just tremendously long. And, you know, as much as I would love to have seen some of the galleries and um, experienced some of the duomos and all of that, I just, I was like, oh, okay, I don't care enough to like make the effort to make a reservation, stand in line, and basically waste like an entire day doing that. And Sarah and Caitlin had both been to Florence already and they had done all of that. And so they didn't care at all. So we were all on the same page. We just wanted to walk around and eat good food and do some shopping or whatever. So it was, I could not have asked for better travel partners. There wasn't one moment where one of us was like, I have to do this. And the other two of us were like dreading it. You know, it was, it was just perfect. So it was really quite the dream vacation, you know, to just, be with like two people that you really enjoy spending time with and just hanging out in in like a foreign country. So yeah, it was really, really magical, really magical. So I'm already plotting another trip back to Italy because when I came home, I told my husband like just how much he would like Florence. My husband is much, much more into like history and that sort of thing than I am. Um, and I just think he would love, and Rome, you know, to see the Colosseum, all that kind of stuff. I think he would really, really enjoy that. So I'm already plotting a return, <laughs> a return to Italy. I'm thinking like a, like a Rome, um, Sicily, Florence situation. I guess we'd have to figure out like where we'd fly in and where we'd fly out or whatever, but I think he really liked that. Or like a Rome, Puglia, Florence thing, but I think he definitely needs to see Rome and Florence. Um, and then maybe Venice and like the more northern part of Italy, like on another trip. But yeah, I mean, I feel like I need to squeeze Italy in um, like at least once a year to get it all in. <laughs> I need to go back at least once a year and just hit all the different areas. It's nice to be home, but I really, I kind of miss my time over in Europe. It was really, really lovely. It was a lot of fun. Oh, the sun is starting to come out. <laughs> um, let me show you some PR that I got while I was away. I have not gotten a chance to open it up yet. Wow, I have all this random mail I need to go through also. Um, but let's see, let's start with this box. 
that I got from Kier Weiss. This contains, oh, her new tinted lip balms. Awesome. Let's take a look. 24 hours of hydration. Uh, 10 certified organic oils such as rose oil, olive oil, Brazil nut oil, and cocoa butter. Um, hyaluronic acid, squalane. Oh my God, I love their packaging. Look at this beautiful refillable lipstick case. And then here is the refill. Oh, KW Red. Okay, so maybe there are more. Oh, duh, it says right at the bottom. Comes in a choice of five expertly created lip enhancing colors and clear, so six in total, and they sent over KW Red. So this is the refill, which comes in a 100% uh, recyclable container packaging. Here's the little refill. I just need to stick that right in there, take that cap off, and there we go. We're in business, super easy. So super light tint, let me apply some. Ooh. Oh, I love that. It gives me like popsicle lips. Oh, nice. Thank you so, so much, Curewise. This is going right into the handbag. Next, I got something from RMS. A little card that says, Hey, hon, this is our first ever SPF. It only took me a decade to perfect the formula. I hope you love it as much as I do. All right, here we go. Ooh. Clean sun protection. Meet Supernatural Radiance Serum SPF 30. Oh, here's the packaging. Very pretty, let me shake it up and unscrew it. So on the back it says Light Aura. So I'm guessing it comes in different shades and I think this is probably a quick little rendition of what's available. I'm a feeling they sent me Light Aura, which is the lightest one over here. It looks like there's uh, like a mid-tone and then a deeper shade. Let me just squeeze some out here. Ooh, it's like glowy. Oh, it's like super glowy. Ooh, that is exciting. And for a serum, it has a little bit more of like a, like a thickness to it. It's not that runny. Oh, that's nice. Ooh, okay. Definitely going into a trying new makeup video. That is very cool. Thank you very, very much, RMS. And then, well, I guess this is the season for SPFs. So Bare Minerals sent over their Skin Longevity Phyto Vitamin C Brightening Moisturizer Mineral SPF 30. Stay radiant in the rays. So here is the box that it comes in. This has mineral sunscreen. Hold on, let me see what the RMS has. I think this is mineral sunscreen as well. Zinc oxide, 20% non-nano. Okay, and then for bare minerals, it is titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. So yeah, mineral sunscreens here. Here is the bare minerals packaging. Ah, so this, I don't know if this has a tint or not. Maybe a little bit, or if it blends out to clear. Nice, this also has a glow to it. I don't know if you can see, there's like slight shimmers in there. All right, I am always down for a little extra glow since I look like I'm slowly dying from the inside out. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bare Minerals, very cool. And then, Oh my gosh, okay, so yes, more SPF. So this is from Super Goop. But do you guys know the show? Actually, I think it's the show is based off of a book, but The Summer I Turned Pretty, it's on Amazon Prime. The second season, I think is out or is coming out very, very soon. I watched the first season, I just fell in love with all the characters. <laughs> I'm so team belly. Anyway, um, oh, it says July 14th, new season. I'm not sure when this is going up, but I think it's out already. <gasps> That's so exciting. Uh, here is, I think her, I think the actress's name is Lola Tung, but her name on the show is Belly. So, oh yeah, get Belly's summer glow up with this exclusive limited edition set featuring our very own it couple of the season, glow screen and glow oil. Aw, how cute. So there's like special, the summer I turn pretty packaging basically with these flowers and stuff. So here's the glow oil, here's the glow screen, and then, Oh, they added this like fun butterfly clip. <laughs> so cute. Oh, thank you so much, Super Goop. I am such a fan of the show. I have to watch season two, like ASAP. All right, and then this is from, ah, uh, from K18. Is this, is this Sophia Ritchie? I like did not know anything about her until her wedding. 
And I was like, why is everyone so interested in this person? I had no idea who she was. Yeah, Sophia Ritchie Grange. Apologies, because she just got married. Here's a picture of her, the stylist. And oh, they sent over their, their leave-in hair mask, which I think K18 is really known for. And then their newer product, their Molecular Repair Hair Oil. So thank you so much, K18, for this re-up. Very exciting. And then U Beauty sent me uh, this set that they have. This is the resurfacing compound. So this helps me with like smoothing out my skin. It is, I have very sensitive eczema prone skin, so I have to be careful when using products like this. So I'll use their resurfacing compound, you know, like once or twice a, uh, a week. You guys have heard me say that, you know, in regards to other products with like other acids and stuff in there, but like once or twice a week seems to be okay. I used to not be able to use these products like at all ever, but my skin has definitely become more resilient. The older I've gotten, it's like one of the very, very few things that has improved as I've gotten older. Go figure. So anyway, the resurfacing compound and then the plasma lip compound, which you guys know I love. They sent over the tinted versions, which is one of like the very few things that I took with me to Italy. So that's how much I love it. So thank you very much, you beauty. And then last but not least, we have a box from Laura Mercier. Caviar Stick Eyeshadow Matte Plus Caviar Tightline Eyeliner. Huh, for Michelle. That's so nice. Oh, cool. Okay, so here's one of the matte sticks. Looks just like their other caviar sticks. This one is Cafe Noir. Ooh, nice chocolatey brown. Nice. Definitely matte. And then let's open up one of their eyeliners. Let's see. Caviar Eyeliner Pencil. And this is in the shade Coco. This is what their pencil looks like. It is one that needs to be sharpened. And ooh, really creamy. So this is the eyeliner, this is the matte crayon. That is super duper creamy. Are these gel? Caviar eyeliner pencil. They definitely feel like they're like a gel eyeliner. So the card says, uh, the caviar eyeshadow stick is back and better than ever. Now available in 12 new matte shades. Uh, improved smudge proof formula. That is awesome. Designed to last all day long and launching with its perfect companion, the new Caviar Tightline Eyeliner. Awesome. Well, a big thank you to Laura Mercier. I'm really getting into these shadow sticks. Like last night, I used the Sicily one. They're just so easy. <laughs> They're just so, so easy. Not like I didn't love them before. I think my lifestyle is really, really embracing <laughs> the eyeshadow stick now. All right, that is it for the PR that I got in while I was away. So I'm going to close this vlog out here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm glad we could sit down and chat a little bit about my trip and a big thank you to Fluorosis for sponsoring a portion of this video. I'll leave a link down in my description box for um, that beautiful cleansing oil. I just love it so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.